Hello friends, welcome back. In the last chapter we have discussed about hospital covert infection in the PICU and in this tutorial we will be discussing about febrile neutropenia in children. As in the last class, we will go step by step from definition, risk factor, etiology and finally the protocol. So let's start. Fever is a common problem in children presenting to the emergency department and it may be one of the first indication of a life-threatening infection. As we know, the function of neutrophil is to fight against invading pathogens and neutropenia means a decrease in number of these neutrophils and then what is febrile neutropenia so what happened when a child has neutropenia and child's ability to fight against pathogen is decreased then various organisms may invade the child and they it may produce an infection as a result there may be fever then we say the child is suffering from febrile neutropenia then what is the definition of febrile neutropenia We say febrile neutropenia when the child has the following criteria. Number one, absolute neutrophil count is less than 500 per millimeter cube or absolute neutrophil count less than 1000 per millimeter cube with an expected decline. And the child should be suffering from fever. So what kind of fever? A single temperature oral or auxiliary more than 101 degree Fahrenheit or two consecutive temperatures of 104 degree Fahrenheit at least uh, in, in 12 hours period. The epidemiology of neutropenic patient varies according to the geographical location and the treatment center. And only 10 to 30 percent patient yield a microbiological diagnosis. And out of that gram-positive bacteria accounts for 60 to 70 percent of those microbiologically positive cases. Now we will see some common etiological agent in febrile neutropenic patients in children. So the commonly implicated organisms are gram-positive organisms like Staphylococcus aureus, Coagulus negative Staphylococcus, Enterococcus, Streptococcus, Pneumonia, Streptococcus pyogenes and Streptococcus viridens. So Staphylococcus aureus and coagulase negative Staphylococcus are more common in a patient with uh, some entry point in the skin. Maybe uh, the child is on a uh, IV cannula or a central line. So those ch are some cut injuries. So there may be chances of this uh, gram positive infection. Gram negative organisms like gram negative like E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Pseudomonas very important Citrobacter and Cytnetobacter Some anaerobic organisms like Bacteroids Clostridium and Fusobacterium. Fungi, some fungi like Candida, Species, Aspergillus and Zygo.
mycetes and some virus so these are some of the commonly implicated organism in a patient with febrile neutropenia now we will discuss evaluation of a patient with febrile neutropenia first of all we have to try to find out the foci of infection and for that we have to do a thorough physical examination and we have to take a very good history so number one point history and uh, detail physical examination should be done so in history and detailed physical examination you have to examine the oropharynx you have to examine in the respiratory tract you have to examine the abdomen the perianal area urinary tract also you have to rule out blood infection central venous line you have to assess skin you have to assess soft tissue you have to assess so after assessing all this area you should try to find out the foci and treat accordingly some fungal infections may manifest as an oral ulcer or maybe some uh, gastritis like symptoms like burning uh, chest pain etc due to some esophagitis and there may be some perianal infections like some abscesses in the perianal area and sometimes may require a surgical um, treatment also because there may be some tephilitis or appendicitis in the abdomen so you have to thoroughly uh, look for the uh, foci then uh, the second point is the clinical status of the patient like vitals oral intake how is the oral intake then you have to do some baseline investigation then you have to do some baseline investigation like you have to do the cbc absolute neutrophil count abc serum biochemistry and the fourth point which is very important in a patient with febrile neutropenia is bacteriological and fungal culture and sensitivity so you may have to send the blood the urine or some pus or um, csf sometimes stool central line site so you have to do a culture and you have to take a chest x-ray baseline because you have to do a serial chest x-ray because sometimes there may be some evolving pneumonitis or interstitial pneumonitis so you should not miss this so at the first contact you should take a chest x-ray of the patient so after doing the evaluation with proper history taking physical examination and then in sending proper investigations and doing a chest x-ray doing the vital statistics we have to stratify the patient as high risk or low risk category because the treatment will depend upon the risk stratification and the prognosis also depends upon the risk stratification so now we will discuss about the risk stratification in a children with febrile neutropenia so when the child will be considered to be a, a high risk patient number 1 if there is profound neutropenia so what is profound neutropenia absolute neutrophil count of less than 100 mm cube or there is some comorbid conditions associated or uh, maybe shock pneumonia diarrhea etc uh, there is hemodynamic instability uh, gi symptoms like abdominal pain nausea vomiting etc and uh, the child has an iv catheter infection if the child is having hypoxemia or there is some uh, new pulmonary changes in the chest x ray there is evidence of hepatic dysfunction or renal dysfunction so these are candidate with the high risk and the low risk factors are 
like a normal chest x-ray a normal liver function test a normal re renal function test uh, the absolute neutrophil count is more than 100 like that so we'll see the uh, low risk factors like number one no IV catheter associated infections like there is no IV catheter resection uh, peak temperature is uh, temperature is less than 102 degree Fahrenheit and your uh, there is uh, no neurological logical involvement and then no GI symptoms and no comorbid conditions no comorbid conditions like shock so before we go to the antibiotic protocol let us understand the, what is the principle behind this antibiotic protocol. In the treatment of febrile neutropenic children, the role of supportive therapy is also very important. Supportive therapy in the sense of like a proper hand hygiene, a standard nursing barrier, then a neutropenic diet, component therapy, fluid management, everything has a very important role. But when it comes to antibiotic therapy, there are three school of thought. In single drug therapy, third and fourth generation cephalosporin like cefepime, ceftazidime, cefoperazine may be used or carbapenems like meropenem, imipenem can be used or piperacillin is can be used. But the problem with monotherapy is that you have to monitor the patient or the child very much carefully and there is chance of drug resistance and uh, sometimes some coagulase negative organisms may not be covered. In a two drug therapy without glycopeptides, the common antibiotics of choice are aminoglycosides exantamycin with a anti-pseudomonal carboxycillin like uh, piperacillin tazobectam or amino glycosides along with a third or fourth generation cephalosporin with anti-pseudomonal activities like cephepime, uh, cephoperazone or septazidim. Lastly, amino glycosides along with an carbapenems like meropenem or imipenem. And the thirdly, where vancomycin is used along with some other drugs. When the suspicion of gram-positive organism is very high, catheter-related infection, there is a uh, blood culture positive, uh, gram-positive organism, or there is hypotension, severe sepsis. In those cases, vancomycin can be add uh, first choice. Along with that, we can add a piperacillin tazobectum or vancomycin plus cephoperazin salvectum. So these are the basically the uh, principle behind the antibiotic therapy is based upon. Now we will see the protocol. You can see in a child with fever more than 38.3 degrees Celsius or neutropenia less than 500 per millimeter cube. We will do a thorough evaluation. Then we will check whether vancomycin is required or not. Okay. If we find that there is indication of vancomycin, like there is hypotension or evidence of septic shock, there is colonization with a methicillin resistance staphylococcus aureus, obvious catheter related infection is there, high risk of viridens staphylococci, like there is severe mucositis, maybe there is use of some uh, chemotherapeutic agents, as a result there is mucositis, so the chances of staphylococcus viridens is very high or there is AML or prior quinolone prophylaxis. In all these cases, the chances of uh, gram-positive organism is very high, so vancomycin may be required. So in that case, along with vancomycin, we will use piperacillin tazobectum or vancomycin plus cephoperazone salpectum. And amikacin, there is plus minus. We can use or we may not use. So it is a plus minus thing, okay? Now, if vancomycin is not required, there is no indication. That means there is not uh, culture positive, uh, gram positive organism in the culture. There is no hypertension. There is no catheter related obvious infection. In all the other cases, we will consider monotherapy or duotherapy. So monotherapy is not so good, not so popular because of the chances of drug resistance. So in dual therapy, we can go for piperacillin tazobectum or cephoperazone salpectum. So 
the main co concept is that in dual therapy one of the agents should be anti pseudomonal okay so either piperacillin thysobactam as a carbox carboxylin or you can go for a third or fourth generation cephalosporin like cefepime septazidim also but uh, you uh, may say you are going for cephalopresin salbectum along with you have to give a aminoglycosides then you have to reassess the ch uh, child after three days okay after starting the antibiotic you reassess the child if the child responded well and child is febrile now then you try to find out the etiology if there is no etiology and uh, later on the child is febrile for 48 hours and the child's vital condition is stable the child falls in the low category there is no gi complication lft rft is normal chest x-ray is normal lft rft is normal chest x-ray is normal then you can discharge on oral antibiotic like cephalopodoxim and after some times you can reassess and you will uh, when the absolute neutrophil count is more than 500 for two consecutive occasions then you can stop the antibiotic and if you find a definite etiology then you can adjust the antibiotic accordingly maybe there is some fungal pathogens or something other something else and you should adjust accordingly and uh, in a high risk if this child is high risk then you can continue the antibiotic therapy until recovery so after three days if there is persistence of fever what you will do you have to reassess reevaluate and do some special investigation to find out the etiology the folk guide you can go for culture sensitivity again see chest x-ray if there is some atypical changes in the chest x-ray so what what will you do continue same antibiotic in the clinically stable or the change the antibiotic if there is worsening or consider antifungal and antiviral drugs so even after starting third or fourth generation cephalosporin carbapenems aminoglycosides anti pseudomonal organisms anti uh, gram positive vancomycin if there is no response you have to think there may be some pneumocystis in uh, infection or there may be some fungal infection some viral infection some other atypical organism so you have to reevaluate so after reevaluation if the absolute neutrophil count is more than 500 per millimeter cube then you stop the antibiotic after 4 to 5 days or absolute neutrophil count is still less than 500 millimeter cube on day 7 continue for another 2 week then reassess and stop if clinically stable so this is basically the antibiotic protocol in a patient with febrile neutropenia common antifungal yeah, used in this patients are amphotericin B and uh, fluconazole and common antivirals like acyclovir or vancyclovir can be used in this patients according to the causative organism obviously and sometimes antibiotic prophylaxis may be required and sometimes oral antibiotics also given in some low risk patient and in home uh, there is no uh, foci is found and the uh, patient is uh, clinically stable then you can start oral antibiotic but uh, it's uh, but you have to be very vigilant you have to examine the child uh, regularly and you have to do the thorough assessment regular assessment because uh, yeah, there may be some problem no, you have to be very careful a uh, prophylaxis with co trimoxazole is given uh, in a uh, children with pcp pneumonitis and some uh, fungal infections may require some prophylaxis thank you